So as we said, we're starting in our kitchen tonight. And let me explain to you a little bit the ingredients that we're using for our pizza dough. First of all, I have dissolved the yeast, um, about a two teaspoons of yeast in a cup and a half of warm water. We've got four and a half cups of flour, and we actually got a new type of flour um, from Italy. It's farina zero. We're gonna tell you more about that later, and we'll see if it actually works any better than what we usually use. Uh, we also need a teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of olive oil. So we're just gonna start by pouring the dissolved yeast in the, and the water into the bowl, and then we're just gonna add all of the other ingredients. So like I said, a teaspoon of salt. I'm actually gonna put the salt in after that. We're gonna add the flour first. Um, okay, get all of that in there, and then we're going to put a teaspoon of salt. I don't know why I decided afterwards, but I did, so that's the way we're doing this. And then two tablespoons of olive oil. I realize that is not a tablespoon, so one, two. And as you can tell, everything is, you know, measured to a certain degree because it's really about feel, touch, and consistency. Now that we put everything in there, we are just going to let it mix a little bit. And um, it's really, it's best to try and tell early on if the amount of water and flour are correct. So the way I normally do that is I, as you can see, it's mixing nicely, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just check it out real quick because a lot of times that water can be at the bottom. Turn it a little bit to try and get it mixed nicely. I'm thinking we're gonna need a little bit more water in this, let's see. You don't want to get it too watery, but you also don't want it too dry. So it's just a question of watching and adjusting. Um, in a minute, I'll probably know better. Like I said, I'm thinking I'm gonna need a drop or two more of water. But let me see. Because it's just not quite pulling together the way I want it to. So what I did is I just added a little more warm water to the same thing, but like I said, that was probably a tablespoon or two. It just takes a little to make a big difference. So let that go a little bit. Okay, so I would say this is about the right consistency. As you can see, it's elastic, but it's not sticking to my hands, okay? So that, I did add a little more water here and there just to get it to this right feel. Um, now that we've got it at this point, we're gonna just let it knead for about five minutes um, in the KitchenAid mixer. So I think we are ready. So let's check this out. If I, um, in the past five minutes, I would take the dough out and check it every once in a while, but it should, you can see it's 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 smoother now, um, and it's got a, a nice lighter feel um, to it than before. So I think our, I don't know, what was it, maybe Francesco, seven minutes that we let it go? Okay, so I'm gonna take, I've got a nice uh, cloth here. I'm gonna sprinkle some flour generously around it, and I'm gonna just pat a little bit on top of this as well. And then we are going to cover this and um, leave space because this is gonna grow. So I'm just, I'm loosely closing the ends and we're gonna leave it here in a warm spot. Well, not a cold spot, I should say, uh, for the next few hours. So here it is now after a few hours. And so we're just going to 
peel it off, um, you'll notice the top part's a little harder than the bottom. So that's one of the reasons that we are going to put it back in the KitchenAid and knead it for a... Okay, so I think that is enough. We're gonna take our dough out and now it's gonna go in the refrigerator all night and most of the day tomorrow. So we're going to put it in a Ziploc bag, put a little flour in here because as it sits in the Ziploc in the refrigerator, it gets moist and a little bit sticky. So we don't want it sticking to the side of our Ziploc too much. So we'll just get, that, get the air out of there, seal it up, and spread the flour around, put it in the refrigerator. So we pulled this out of the refrigerator after 24 hours and look how nice it is. It has um, risen a little bit more. As you can see, what we're worried about is to get as thin as you can. So once we have are satisfied with how thinly we have rolled this out, we are going to place it on our pizza plate. And normally what we do is we uh, pre-bake the crust for about 10 minutes before we put the toppings on it. Uh, and to ensure that it doesn't bubble too much, prick generously across the crust, and then pop it in the oven uh, that we've heated to 450 degrees for about 10 minutes. Okay, so like I said, about 10 minutes in the oven just to get a little barely golden brown. Um, and now we're going to put the toppings on. So we are making the pizza margarita, um, so we need tomatoes. These are whole peeled tomatoes. Mozzarella, which I took um, the bel gioioso mozzarella and I pat the slices to um, between paper towels and then at, um, we'll add a little oregano on top and then after it comes out of the oven we will put some basil on. Our variation on pizza margarita is to add capers to it, so we will do that as well. Like I said, the tomato sauce, that may really surprise you guys, but the, toma the tomato sauce in Italy that they use on their pizza is pureed peeled tomatoes, and that is it, nothing else. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. I had a can of whole peeled tomatoes. I'm just gonna give them a quick puree. There we go. That is it because we don't need any corn syrup or any of those other things that often get added into a red sauce. The other secret about the um, Italian pizza sauce is that not very much. We are just literally going to put enough to cover. We're not going to drown it in tomato sauce, okay? Spread it out, that's why I use this. Just spread it out, but not drowned it in the tomato sauce, okay? Second favorite pizza of ours. Here we go, this one is now ready to go in the oven and it'll probably be, and voila, ecco la pizza. Drizzle a little olive oil on it and serve. Oh, and the basil.